Freeman, general relativity, and quantum mechanics are the two elements of science that most explain what our world is. One, the whole universe, the other, the microstructure of reality. And everybody tells me that we've got to integrate these two to make sense out of reality. And uh, everybody is trying to do that. Uh, is, is that really necessary? I don't think so. But of course, I'm in the minority there, as usual. <laughs> but no, I, I, I think I, 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 it, it, the, the world does have two different aspects. I mean, this is the world of physics, which maybe should not be unified. And, and in some way, I like a universe to be more diverse, more, more subtle, rather than pulling it all together. And, and so anyway, here's what I think, that the, 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 the classical world is what we know about the past. It, every, all our knowledge of the past essentially is classical. That's to say, we, we know facts. We know what happened when. We know that the Earth condensed out of a cloud of dust, and we know that the continents have been shifting around, and we know that a particular atom of uranium mm. did in fact <laughs> decay at 9 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> and, and So those are facts. On the other hand, we have quantum mechanics, which talks about the future, which enables us to calculate probabilities that if you want to know when this uranium atom is going to decay, there's no way you can tell. You can calculate the probability there is one part in one chance in a million that it will have decayed by the end of next week or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so that's what quantum mechanics can do, and that's all it can do. It's, it's about the future, it's about probabilities. So why should you try to unify those two? It is, it, I don't think you have to. And in fact, the, the, the great physicist Niels Bohr, who was more or less the, sort of the founding father of quantum mechanics, believed in keeping them separate. And, and so I'm actually just following him. He always believed that there is a classical world and your measuring apparatus is always classical. And everything you can say with certainty is classical. And, and there's also the quantum world which is not directly observable, but is there, and all you can do with it is to, to, to use it for calculating probabilities. So I don't find anything wrong with that. And of course, it has a consequence which, which when you come to, to look at general relativity, mm -hmm. because general relativity is a classical theory. It tells how the universe behaves on the large scale, it's a theory of gravita gravitation and space and time. It's a geometrical theory. And it has been enormously successful. It is, it is it's sort of the most beautiful, in a way, the most beautiful theory we have in the sense of being precise and, 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 and subtle and still simple in, in its foundations. And in some way, it would spoil it if you bring them together. <laughs> I, I, I don't see why one, one should. So... I would say let's leave gravitation theory, the theory of Einstein, as part of the classical world. Don't try to drag it into quantum mechanics. The argument, though, takes us back to the very beginning, and it, it, it says that in order to go to the first uh, instant of the Big Bang, that that the two fight and, and, and mathematically we have uh, absurdities that occur. And so something must happen if we want to push our understanding to that ultimate point. Well, that we don't know. I mean, you know, that, that, that's a statement, but it's not really an argument. <laughs> we know nothing about the, 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 the Big Bang in detail. I mean, it, it certainly happened. But to, to, we are, we are, uh, I think it's amazing how far we are able to explore into the past. But we certainly haven't yet got there. Well, we have these four fundamental forces. And uh, first, uh, electricity and magnetism were united. And then they united the weak force with that. Uh, and then the strong force uh, has been, and, and, the, and the one holdout is gravity right and, you know should sh why should that remain a holdout in terms of being able to be unified at some energy level or something 
Well, it could be something like temperature. I mean, temperature is is a classical quantity. You can you can measure temperature, and you can and you can talk about temperature, but you can't quantize it. There's no way. Uh-huh. There's no you, you can't talk about temperature as a quantum object or. There's no such a thing. tampon. There's no such thing as a tampon. Yes, and <laughs> it is. It is. A, it's. A, it's really a statistical property uh, of, of matter in bulk. Uh, and the same thing could be true of gravitation. Well, that's very interesting because that would mean that this so-called graviton, which is like the photon and for electromagnetism, the the quantum uh, quanta of of, uh, of gravity, is uh, is a fiction. Yes. I mean, I would say it is a fiction in the sense that you 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 can study it mathematically, but you can never study it in the real world. Mm. You can never. I can't think of a, a, any thought experiment which could tell whether a graviton is there or not. I mean, we can observe crowds and crowds of gravitons coherently because then they become a classical field. <laughs> but there could be a classical field without having gravitons. So your worldview is completely comfortable if gravity is never integrated into quantum theory. Right. That to me seems, it's certainly quite plausible. I don't say it's true, but there's no evidence against it as far as I can see. There's a a, a very famous uh, argument of Bohr and Rosenfeld, which was one of their most famous papers, which Bohr was a perfectionist and he wrote 14 drafts of this paper and almost drove Rosenfeld crazy. And it finally was published as a big, big, fat paper about the measurability of electric and magnetic fields. And he, by analyzing very, very carefully the quantum measurements of the electric and magnetic fields, he proved that, in fact, the photon exists, and in, yeah. that the photon really has the properties that you postulate for it that you can't have an electric and magnetic field without having photons. But if you look very carefully at his apparatus in that paper, you find there's a thing he calls compensation, which is very essential, that the measuring apparatus consists of a charge or a current, an electric charge or an electric current. And when you use that to measure the field, the measuring apparatus itself produces additional fields which will mess up the measurement unless you compensate them. So you have to have another set of charges and currents which you don't measure, but you use them to compensate for the ones that do measure. So that compensation is an essential part of this whole argument. Well, try to do that with gravitation. When you try to measure a gravitational field, you have to have a mass to measure it with. The mass, by looking at the mass, you can tell what the gravitational field was. But there's no way you can compensate a mass with a negative mass. <laughs> so, the, so there is a real difference there. So this argument of Bohr and Rosenfeld, which supports the quantization of the photon, fails when you come to gravity. Mm. There's also the, the real issue that gravity is so much weaker than electromagnetism, like what, 10 to the 39th or some enormous differential, which really puts them into certainly different measurement categories. Yes, if you look at the LIGO apparatus, which is now measuring classical gravitational fields, and you, you figure out what is the, 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 the threshold of that piece of apparatus, the, the weakest gravitational wave that it could, could actually mm. measure. The answer is that's 10 to the power 37 gravitons. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to improve it by 37 orders of magnitude to see a single graviton, and, and I have uh, calculated that that, in, even in principle, can't be done. And, but if you did, actually, if you build such an apparatus to measure a single graviton, it would, in fact, collapse into a black hole. And <laughs> so nature would say, no, you can't do it. And, so it's, but in your view, it's not only that it, 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 it can't be seen, but that you have no discomfort that they, they remain permanently and in some final physics, different. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that it would be a much more interesting universe, in fact, if, if it has these two quite disconnected parts. And, and, and uh, of course, there's much more which we still don't understand. So this, all these questions may turn out to be irrelevant in the end. 